one. Today, you're going to see biofeedback in action. I'm going to show you how to use a biofeedback to treat a person with urinary incontinence. We're going to use biofeedback to teach that individual how to control the pelvic floor muscle in the same time how to relax the abdominal muscle. When we are doing the uh, pelvic floor, one group of the sensor is going to be on the abdominal area. This is to monitor the contraction of the abdominal muscle. When we are training the pelvic floor contraction, we do not want them to push this area. Otherwise, you're creating what we call the paradoxical contraction. On one hand, you want to encourage the, uh, the patient to contract the pelvic floor muscle. But on the other hand, you want the pelvic floor muscle to relax. If it doesn't relax, you have a pushing force concurrently occur, uh, happen together and that will defeat the purpose. And this is one of the maladaptive contractions that happen for people with pelvic floor dysfunction. And this is our sensor. This is a vagina sensor. What we are going to do is we're going to put some gel into the sensor head to lubricate the entire sensor. And then we are going to put that into the vaginal area to detect the muscle contraction, the pelvic floor muscle contraction. The biofeedback system that we are using is called a biotrace and in this system we need to activate the program first and then we find out the patient's name and then input his data after that then we can start doing the training and before we start doing that we have to make sure the machine is working so we're going to ask the patient to do a few sessions of uh, contraction and then see if there is any signal occurring if there's an improper connection and you are not going to be able to see the signal in this case you can see that the, uh, it is working on the blue side which is the top is the vaginal muscle contraction which is the pelvic floor muscle contraction on the lower part is the abdominal contraction we want to maintain the abdominal contraction as low as possible. Usually it's the resting uh, muscle tone below se 7 or 5. Whereas the pelvic floor contraction, you want to be able to contract for about 5 or above. Anything that is below will be considered very weak and the pelvic floor muscles, muscle recruitment can be considered very weak and that's the one of the reasons why the patient will experience leakage or in urinary incontinence, especially when they are doing the coughing or jumping activity. Okay. I want you to contract your pelvic floor muscle and then bring this one all the way above the blood spot, okay? In the same time, I want you to relax your abdominal muscle, okay? Contract. Relax. Now, if you are able to do that, the puzzle is going to complete, okay? It's going to move, mm -hmm. all right? Now, if you cannot do that, I'm going to lower the bar down a little bit, okay? Contract. Relax. Okay, now I'm going to lower it down. Yeah. Hold it there, hold it there. Now, you got to relax your abdominal muscle, okay? You have to relax your abdominal muscle, otherwise the puzzle is not going to move. Contract. Good. Now you see the puzzle is moving now. Okay. But you need to relax your abdominal muscle. Okay. Relax your abdominal muscle. Alright. Contract. Good. Good. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, good, good, good. Just like that, okay? Now, 
try and do that, okay? I can give you the audio sound if you want to, okay? But whatever, if you feel comfortable looking at this graph, I'll give you the graph, all right? All right, contract. Good, 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 good. You see the puzzle is moving? Yeah, it's good, just like that. If you like what you see, please give us a like and subscribe. We're trying to make this channel as informative as possible. Thank you.